Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Midweek Message. It is Wednesday, the 13th of July, 2022. Before I start the Midweek Message, I just want to say a quick word about spoof emails. I know a bunch of you got an email that looked like it was from me, but it was not from me. It's really hard to stop these spoof emails because they're not using my email account. They're just skimming off the web to get email addresses that I send to. Then they're making up a fake email address and sending an email asking for stuff. So I want you to know a couple things. First of all, I will never send you an email asking you to send me gift cards or cash or anything like that. Or if you think it could be me, or if you wonder if it could be me, you can email my real email address. You can call me on my cell phone if you have that number. You can always call the church office, any of those ways before you ever respond to any email like that. Please do that. And don't just respond to the email but instead write to me at my work email address and I will let you know for sure whether I sent that, but if someone's asking you for gift cards or money or something that seems a little shady, it probably is, and I can pretty much assure you that it's not me, but I don't want anyone to get caught up in that or feel like you got taken advantage of. A few months ago, I listened to an interview with an author whose name is Johan Hari, who wrote a book called Stolen Focus. In this book, he argues that technology companies have created a way to take away our ability to concentrate on thought and activity. The technology is intentionally taking away our ability to hone in on things that matter. These companies make money from our attention. They can sell it to advertisers, and their entire business model during the digital age is that we are the products and the advertisers are the consumers. Businesses actually pay other companies for our attention. and They'll do almost anything to grab it. Too often, we willingly give it away. That's why media organizations create small incentives for us to keep turning back to social media or other places where we engage with technology or to keep you looking at your phone. There are hearts and likes to collect. There are comments to read. There are meaningless rewards to be earned and sounds that emanate from our phones to grab our attention again and again throughout the day. For many of us, it means we seldom have an uninterrupted moment of our day. If you carry a cell phone around, you know the power it has over us. When your phone dings or buzzes, it compels you to see what it's telling you. Is it important information? Is someone trying to tell me something I need to know? Did I get to 50 or even 100 likes on my post about my dog? Having our attention stolen is more than an annoyance. It actually has changed the way that we interact with the world and with the people around us. How many times have you gone to a restaurant or a store only to see two people doing their own thing together with their heads buried in their cell phones? Sometime, sometimes the person immersed in a handheld screen might be you or me. It's oddly captivating. And sometimes the pull of technology can even bring us to dark or distressing places. It's easy to go down a political or social rabbit hole on one's phone or computer, absorbed in some debate that has little or nothing to do with your daily life, or reading comment after comment, either echoing what you already believe or writing things that you know will drive you mad. I'm not suggesting that we give up all technology. There are many instances and applications where it's useful, even essential in today's world. But when we carry our phones around with us all the time and are tethered to a screen or device that begs for our attention all day, every day, we become trapped by a demanding master. Sometimes our stolen attention keeps us from hearing and learning from the diverse and interesting perspectives of the people who are right around us. When we spend too much time chasing social media likes or going down specific trails on politics or policy or social situations, it can actually drive a wedge between us and people we actually know and care about. Sometimes we tune out the people we love because we don't have the attention to give to relationships that really matter. Another cost of our stolen attention is that we can overlook beauty that's right in front of us. Everything has to be mediated through a screen or somehow it doesn't feel authentic or real. Just last night, Jen and I were walking through our neighborhood and the light at sunset was spectacular. Just as we were commenting on the beauty and the character of the light that evening, there was a group of young women who jumped out of a parked car, bunched together. One of them held out a mobile phone, and I heard somebody say, she said, we have to post a picture with us, with this incredible 
sunset on Instagram. They took about four or five pictures in a hurry and then they piled back into the car and they drove away. There's nothing wrong with posting a stunning sunset on Instagram, but it made me think about how often our appreciation of nature and beauty and even other people is now mediated through our virtual experience of the world. The sunset's not given simply so we can have a photo op. It's given for our enjoyment so we can absorb and appreciate the beauty of the world that God created. It made me think that there's a better way. Again, there's nothing wrong with technology and there's nothing wrong with social media per se, but it does have this power to invade our lives and to change our relationships with one another and even to change our relationship with God's good world if we're not careful. How can we begin to take back some of our stolen attention? I don't intend to give a list of techniques or practices, but instead I intend to offer a scripture and a poem and just a few words around those things. First, the scripture. The scripture is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, where the Apostle Paul writes this, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So let us seek out and pursue what's honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable excellent and worthy of praise. Let us seek out the beauty that's in the world all around us every day. Some of these things may be online, but I'd venture to guess that most of them are experienced in the real world. Second, a poem by Wendell Berry. I came across this poem recently and it struck me as a clarion call to be present in the world, to enjoy the good gifts that God puts in front of us, and to enjoy them on their own terms to receive these gifts as they are, unmediated by technology and the need to remember them through digital capture. In this poem, Barry laments how technology, in this case, older technology, like a camera, can keep us from the unfiltered experience of a vacation. And I think he's saying ultimately of life. Perhaps one way to take back our stolen attention is to make a commitment to be present in each moment in the places God has put us and with the people God has given us as family and friends. The poem is called The Vacation by Wendell Berry. Once there was a man who filmed his vacation. He went flying down the river in his boat with his video camera to his eye, making a moving picture of the moving river upon which his sleek boat moved swiftly toward the end of his vacation. He showed his vacation to his camera, which pictured it, preserving it forever. The river, the trees, the sky, the light, the bow of his rushing boat, behind which he stood with his camera, preserving his vacation, even as he was having it, so that after he had had it, he would still have it. It would be there. With a flick of a switch, there it would be. But he would not be in it. He would never be in it. Now, one quick thing I, I did want to tell you, the irony is not lost on me that you're probably experiencing this through social media or YouTube, which is owned by Google. So like I said, these aren't necessarily bad technologies, but we need to be careful because there's something that can control and even overtake our lives. Our prayer today comes from the Scottish pastor and professor John Bailey. Let's pray. Almighty God, who of thine infinite wisdom hath ordained that I should live my life within these narrow bounds of time and circumstance. Let me now go forth into the world with a brave and trustful heart. It has pleased thee to withhold from me a perfect knowledge. Therefore, deny me not the grace of faith by which I lay hold of these things unseen. Thou hast given me little power to mold things to my own desire. Therefore, use thine own omnipotence to bring thy desires to pass within me. Thou hast willed it that through labor and pain I should walk the upward way. Be thou then my fellow traveler as I go. Amen. Everyone, I hope that you have a great week, and I hope you have a great weekend. I also hope that you'll join us in worship. You can join us at 9 o'clock for traditional, 10.30 for Southridge. And of course, if you can't make it in person, you can always join us online on Facebook, YouTube, or on our website. All right, have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.